Hey everybody, Brandon here from Create Commander. Thanks for tuning back in. First, I'd like to apologize for my absence. I intended to get this video out last week as a follow-up to the Tabarex deck tech I did, but that link's in the description below. However, technical issues altered the course, and now here we are. But I do have a dedicated camera now, and I hope to be bringing you a lot more content coming real soon. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Please make sure to head over to Instagram and Twitter at Create Commander to follow the channel there for some more interaction and some random card photos every now and then. Uh, if you have not already subscribed, please make sure to hit the red button down below and turn on notifications so you'll be notified when a new video goes live. Let's see if we can get the channel to 100 subscribers. That would be so awesome. I appreciate all of you very much. Okay, promos are out of the way. On today's episode, we are going to be looking at three budget-minded mono-black combos that you can put in your EDH decks. None of these combos, at the time of recording, are over $10 for the whole thing. So, without further delay, let's get into it. The first combo we're going to be discussing today is more of a value combo. Uh, if your opponent has 100 life or something crazy, this card interaction may not be the thing that deals the death blow to them, but it's certainly going to hurt a lot. Uh, for those decks that don't gain life, though, getting this one to go off, especially if your deck has 25 to 30 creatures in it, is almost certainly going to spell doom for your opponents. There's a few pieces that can gain you value with this combo, such as No Rest for the Wicked, Wand of Vertebrae, or Perpetual Timepiece. However, for this example, we're going to focus on the three-card combo of Sir Conrad the Grim, Felden's Curse, and Morality Shift. Keep in mind, this is a budget combo and could instantly be made better with something like an Ulamog or a card that shuffles itself back in, but we don't have the budget for that in this particular deck tech that I did, but this is still a very good card interaction. For this combo to work, you either need access to 13 mana. I know, that's highly unlikely, but it could work. Uh, or, you can just simply have Sir Conrad and Felden's Cane on the battlefield. With Morality Shift in hand, and access to 7 mana, you cast Morality Shift. All the leaving graveyard creatures will trigger Sir Conrad. So every creature that leaves your graveyard at that point will deal one damage to each opponent. And then you can go and tally up how many creatures were in your deck at the time, and each of those will be entering the graveyard, so you get to deal one damage for each of those entering. Once Morality Shift resolves, you can then activate Felden's Cane, put everything, all the creatures that you just got out of your deck when you swapped it over, right back into your library, which will gain you a whole new round of triggers from the creatures leaving the graveyard. As an example, if your deck has 25 creatures left in the deck and then five are in the graveyard, when you switch the creatures from the graveyard, that'll deal five damage to each opponent based on Sir Conrad's trigger. The 25 from your deck entering the graveyard will deal 25 more, which means you've just done 30 damage to each opponent. Once morality shift is complete and you tap the Felden's Cane, well, then the 25 that just entered will then leave the graveyard to go back into the deck, which means that you just dealt 55 damage to all of your opponents in one shot. In a considerable amount of casual games, that's going to be more than enough by the time you have access to 7 mana to be lethal damage and win you the game. The next combo on our list is an all-or-nothing combo. You will either win, or you will deck yourself trying. The easiest way to make this combo work is just waiting for your draw step. However, if you do have the mana to play uh, the final piece and some sort of card draw spell at the same time uh, to set it off, then that's also another way to do it. The pieces you'll need on the battlefield are Villas, Broker of Blood, either Epicure of Blood or Psychosis Crawler. But for this example, we're going to be using Epicure of Blood. And then the final piece 
is Curse of Fool's Wisdom Cursing Yourself. How this combo works is you find a way to draw a card, such as move to your draw step or draw a card through a spell. Curse will then trigger, causing you to lose two life and gain two life. Epicure of Blood will then trigger because you've gained life and drain each opponent for one. Because you've lost life, even though you gained it back, that will also trigger Villus. It says whenever you lose life, you draw that many cards. And then once he sees that you have lost life, it'll cause you to draw again, repeating the process more and more, gaining, losing, losing, gaining, triggering Epicure, hopefully until all of your opponents are dead. The final combo I will review today is a true loop that can finish off your opponents without the risk of decking yourself. This is a four card combo, and while it could be made a three card combo, uh, the build that I made this one for was a bit more of a budget build, and we just didn't have the budget for Phyrexian Altar because, wow. Here's what you're gonna need for this combo to work. Ashnod's Altar and Bantu's Monument on the battlefield. Stonework Pack Beast is a new creature from Zendikar Rising I tried to get in the deck just for some spice, and it made it work. Finally, Oathsworn Vampire is the card that makes this all function. With the artifacts on the battlefield and the vampire in your hand, you need just one black mana for this to work. For one, cast the vampire due to Monument's cost reduction, and when it's cast, Monument drains each opponent for one and gains you one. Then, you get to sacrifice the vampire to Ashnod's altar, creating two colorless mana. Then, you can use that colorless mana to pay into Pack Beast's ability to generate one black mana out of those two colorless mana. Since you've gained life this turn from the monument, you can then recast the vampire from your graveyard however many times you need in order to finish off your opponents but be careful if your opponents are playing storm decks each recast is going to add to the storm count so please be aware of that well that's it thanks for making it to the end of the video again if you have not already please hit the subscribe button down below and hit the like button on this video each one really does help out the channel a lot also leave a comment with your favorite combo from the video down below too Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Free Commander. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.